Yeah, yeah, perfect. So, taking a bit of tape off the screen to stop reminding me. And I'm going to do a very quick presentation. And I'll share my screen and do a very quick presentation. All right, there we go. So, uh, that's who I'm going to talk about to start off with. Mark Hurled. Now, uh, someone pointed out to me uh, the other day that I had it spelt H E R H E R A L D, as in Glasgow Herald newspaper. Um, <laughs> And I looked at it again, and that's how you spell this guy's name. He's he is from Yorkshire, so I'm not going to do a cod Yorkshire accent, but I imagine it's pronounced Hurl. Um, he's a contemporary artist. He uh, he went to Glasgow School of Art uh, and then the Royal College, and he does a lot of uh, this sort of stuff. Um, he studied illustration at Glasgow, and he and at the Royal College, he did natural history illustration at Royal College in London uh, as his masters. Um, and he's a very successful um, artist, illustrator, uh, designer, um, who kind of fits into a, a, a sort of line of, of, of very much English illustrator designers. Uh, designers. And that, uh, that's what he himself feels. And I'll talk about them in a minute. But he does these really nice uh, animal uh, uh, prints, drawings, paintings, collages. And it's going to be collaging that we're going to think about today is more of his work. And another thing I'm going to talk about a lot is, is mark making. So you can see when you look at that, that there's a great huge variety of mark making of, of materials, not a huge variety of materials used, but different materials to make different marks. That is actually, that's a lithograph actually, used, I'm not going to go into technicalities of that, but that's, that's a print. Um, and that's a collage and, and painting. So he's using drawing materials, he's using painting materials, uh, he's cutting, he's sticking uh, to create these really, really lively um, um, images of, of, well, all birds that I'm showing you, but he does other things as well. That's a guy called Edward Borden, who was um, early, mid 20th century, uh, did these water, watercolor paintings top left there. And the other three are, are all prints, lin lino cuts, uh, relief prints um, of things like the natural world, really nice sort of frogs and cows uh, top right there and uh, peacock and magpie, all sorts of birds. Uh, peacock with a crown, there's probably a story to that which I don't know. Um, so that's Edward Borden, he was, he was uh, very influential for Mark Hurled. Uh, another guy who was a contemporary of Borden's, um, Eric Revillius, and they were friends, uh, Borden and Revillius were friends, and they're, they, they're, they were both got married at a similar time and they shared a house. Uh, so that's Eric Revillius and um, Edward Borden. Uh, and you can see the, the sort of, there's a, there's a commonality in the in the subject matter there the the, the cockerel the, the birds of Mark Harold that's more of um, Revillius's work there uh, he he was a war artist as was Borden in the Second World War um, and very sadly he went got an airplane one night and <coughs> North, North Atlantic uh, uh, reconnaissance trip I think it was and never came back they've no idea what happened to them so he died uh, during the Second World War. And there's always sorts of discussion about how, how what he might have done. He, he was 38 when he died. Uh, what he might have done if he'd survived the war. And there, that uh, I rather like those two pictures at the top there, just on the, on the side. It's the the chalk horse horse in Westbury in in Wiltshire. I rather like you know seeing it from the train window and then seeing the train from the horse. I quite like that idea. Two perspectives. Uh, nothing to do with the practice today. I just like it. So Edward Borden, Eric Rebellious, and last guy is called John Craxton. Um, and you can see his line of cuts there, very much sort of interested in the sort of English pastoral, romantic, idyll, that sort of idea, which um, Mark Harold himself says he, he's interested in and he feels a part of. Uh, so back to his work, that's another lithograph, but um, birds, we're gonna have a, have a go at a bird today, which is why I'm showing you birds. Um, and again, different um, mark making, very conscious of, of the kinds of marks, the kinds of patterns, the kinds of textures that he's creating by, by, by uh, using different marks and different materials uh, to make the marks, particularly the arc, that's a, that's a collage again. The one before was lithograph again. This one's a, a collage. Um, and the charming, there's, that's an, another word that's often used to describe one of the artists that I've, that I've just shown you, but also uh, Harold himself, there's a sort of a, a charm. Um, and I put those three in specifically, there's no background to sort of confuse us and just to highlight the idea of the different marks that he's making and the cutting out and sticking down 
uh, to create the collages with, with different marks. And that's the kind of thing that we are going to be doing. And again, the, there at the, uh, the bottom of that one, the, the chicken <coughs> seems to be drinking out of, hang on, I'm just gonna mute someone, drinking out of the, that sort of puddle. That's done with um, what's called frottage. Um, and I'll try and remember how to show you that. You, and you may or may not use that in your uh, piece today. Frottage is, is basically rubbing. You know, that idea of people who used to do brass or still do do brass rubbings, um, go to somewhere and, and uh, that's a similar idea. And the, the technical term for it, if you like, is called frottage. Um, so maybe have a go at that. Um, hang on. So I just put a slide up again from last week uh, to again illustrate the idea of mark making, uh, how different marks create a different feeling, if you like. Uh, that's the Maggie Hamling drawing on the left that we talked about last week with charcoal, which is much more expressive and soft and, and harder to control, uh, but, but creates really nice atmospheric marks. And the, the Henry Moore sheep on the right there created with um, a linear uh, drawing material, uh, possibly pencil or pen, and a much more considered and, and rhythmic uh, use of materials there. So we're going to be talking about that. And I'll just going to, that's the end of the presentation. And I'll stop that there and uh, show you what it is we're going to do. So to do that, I need to switch to my other camera. Give me two seconds. Uh, do that. Oh, there we go. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to shift it across, is something like um, this. So I'm going to show you it, then go back to some demonstrating. Um, so we've got an owl uh, and we've got all sorts of bits and pieces on a collage created with so all these bits are, are loose at the moment and you might eventually stick them down and there's all sorts of stages we're going to go through to, to make one of these or something that might be based on that um, and it, the reason I chose this I, the mark hurled thing that I like uh, and the, the reason is, is is this one here with, with a an owl in it which I which I rather like and he he's using paints in this you know the back this background at the here is used with a, with a brush and paint or ink um, and and there's <coughs> flattering going on with this frame thing here um, uh, you might think about that most of my demonstration is going to be dry materials but you might choose to use paint and that's fine so we're going to go with the idea of the of the uh, the owl not not his owl we're not going to be copying that picture we're going to be doing something else um, I'm going to shift mine just this is what we're going to aim to do I'm going to shift mine to the side for a moment. Just talk to you about materials and mark making for a second. Uh, put that there. Um, so I've got um, the graphite stick that, that I really like. Um, I've got ordinary pencils. Uh, I've, got, I've got a biro. Um, and I've actually got three biros stuck together, which is quite a nice thing to do sometimes. Um, I have charcoal. Um, I've got coloured pencils also, which I might play about with a bit. I've got a Sharpie. So I've just grabbed everything that's in the studio um, or not everything in the studio, but a lot of things in the studio. I've got um, a, a marker pen there as well. So all sorts of stuff. And, and you can use them in the same uh, sequence, the same way that I use them, or you can use them in different ways. It's entirely up to you. Um, so just looking, you know, if, if you, if we do uh, think about the biro, obviously it, it, it's a linear mark and we're going to start off making the background one. Well, I'm going to suggest you do that with the biro. And the reason I stuck three together is you can just do that a wee bit quicker because it's, it's three marks you're making at one time rather than one. So that's quite a nice thing to do, stick, stick things together. Um, the charcoal is a really nice thing and, and I'm going to use it for it, sort of the softness that it, that it brings. Sort of, you know, that's really nice. And you can rub it and then you can draw on top of it again if you want, but I'm just going to use it as the, that sort of soft thing. Um, the pencils, uh, obviously a linear, linear thing, and you can you might use them in the same way that uh, you use the bio. And you can bring color in to your work. It doesn't have to be black and white. I'm going to demonstrate mostly, well, entirely in black and white, uh, but you can bring color if you want. So those are kind of some of the, the um, uh, materials you might use. Now, the, 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 uh, this uh, graphite, pencil is an EHB. It's really nice. I, I use it a lot in the studio and I use it in, on these things because it's easy to see it's very dark. Um, but you get a really nice, uh, really dark mark with that also. Uh, now you might choose to, to use paint and I've got a wee bit of paint here just to do something with the, 
it's um, acrylic paint I've brought in and, a, and a, a sponge, okay? So you might choose to do, um, you know, create textures doing that sort of thing. Um, I've got some white, okay, I've got some white uh, acrylic paint here also. So I've made a gray and then I might do make create some sort of graduation in it by doing that, okay? Um, there's the um, acrylic paint. You might choose to use just a brush. Uh, there's some bits on that owl painting I notice where he's just doing that sort of thing, okay? Um, nice, good thing then. And I'm going to, part of the reason for doing the, the collage, you know, or cutting things out and, and sticking around is, is to try to get people to focus on, on the marks that you're making and not worry about edges and shapes because you bring them in afterwards. Uh, so it's, initially it's just about making, covering bits of paper in or marks or that sort of thing. Um, and the last one I'm gonna do uh, is the toothbrush, okay? Which is very, very messy, uh, but it's pretty good. That, that edge that I showed you on the, this one here, this is made with sort of splattering. And last week I talked about in the, the uh, presentation about the, the caves in Altamira where they put their hand down and they, they blew paint over it. And that's sort of similar idea. I'm not gonna do that because I'm not gonna make my hand filthy. Um, if you take the paint, if you're gonna you do this, uh, so it's a very runny paint. It's, it's, this is acrylic with a lot of water in it. You can use ink, you can all use anything that's kind of runny and you'll need to, need to practice with it a wee bit. If you uh, pull back this way, Okay, the spray will go that way, all right? If you pull back this way from the, from, from the back to the front, from front to back, it'll go forward. From back to front, it'll go backwards. So just bear that in mind when you're doing it, okay? And it's messy. Um, and I might, I'll talk to you, I've got something in mind for that perhaps at the end, uh, if we've got time for making a frame like, uh, the, like the Mark Hurled one. So that's just some ideas about uh, what, what you might do uh, with your materials. And, and uh, you don't have to do what I'm going to do, but think, think about what you've got on hand um, and adapt accordingly and, and ask me questions if you need to. Um, so I'm gonna get on with the picture now. I'll, I'll put this here again. So all these things move. I'm gonna put them to the side, the, the, the owl, uh, the cloud, uh, moon, land, all that, put all that to the side and just think about uh, this bit. This is the sort of the sky at, at night, sky night. Uh, and I've done that with the biro and um, a bit of this. And all that I did, and this takes a, a few minutes now. I, sorry, before I do that, I should talk about size of a bit of paper. I'm using a bit of paper which that was A3. So don't make your surface too large. Uh, this is probably the most time consuming. There's one other bit that's quite time consuming. This is the most... Um, the biggest time sucker of, of all the activities that we do, covering this with biro takes a long time. Um, so don't have, get, use a huge bit of paper. This has been A3, and what I did with my piece of A3, I'll just show you. Uh, I put it down and I took a ruler and I drew a line all the way, all the way around. I made a, made a frame and I chopped it out. So it's that size less than a piece of A3. Um, so you don't have to do that, but I, would, my, I guess a piece of advice would be don't make it too big, just so the, these things aren't, aren't uh, too, too time consuming. So the thing about that, I'll, I'll put that there, put it upside down. What, and what I tried to do, but I wasn't successful in, was making it darker or more dense at the top and slightly less dense at the bottom, okay? Um, so you get some sort of uh, dynamic in the night sky. And, and all that I did, that okay a really random mark so so enjoy it if you can that's why i tied three biros together because it it gets it's a wee bit quicker all right now you don't have to use the biro you can use anything you like if you want to use your pencil i've got a blue pencil there you can do that or, or mix you can mix um materials also to get a different sort of feeling. Uh, so you might do a bit of that and it's a really, really random mark. Uh, try to 
in, just enjoy that kind of uh, letting go of worrying about uh, what it is you're doing and just um, fill up the surface. Till about, till about a wee bit further than halfway down. You don't need to go any further than that because you're, you're, you're creating another surface uh, later on to be the, the landscape itself. So fire in. I should have said the other thing, you'll need a pair of scissors. That was on the email, so hopefully you've got that. You don't realize till you're recording something how noisy uh, pens can be. So I'll, um, I'll just keep, keep going with that if you want or come back to it. For those who've, who've completed that part of it, I'm just going to move on. Um, I'll put my original background down again. Actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, stick with that one that I just made. And the next thing I want to do is I'm not going to do the, the, uh, the bottom part. So when we come to the, the bottom landscape, we'll do that on a different piece of paper. So you'll need several bits of paper for this. I should have said that at the start. I think it was an email. Um, so that's the, the, the night sky you've, you've done. And the landscape will come later on. We're not going to do that straight away. The next thing we're going to move on to is the owl. Now, slightly different owl from the one that Mark Carl did. I've, I've uh, sort of created this, and we're going to base what we do on this. Uh, and it, what we're going to do to start off with is actually make a template, because the, the owl itself is, um, I'm making three different pieces. So you need to start off with, with a template. And what we're going to do is, is draw that so that we end up with something like that. Okay? So that's just a template from which we cut we use to, to make three different pieces. Uh, we end up with something, hopefully, I'll just show you, hang on. I'll move that out of the way just for a second. Uh, you end up with three, three different pieces that you create by using your template like that, okay? So we're gonna draw uh, this owl to end up with the drawing. And the other thing to think about uh, when we're doing it is I made mine so that it's about half, you know, it fills about, doesn't fill, but it, it, it's as long as half of my, my image. So think about how large your owl is going to be on your piece of paper, okay? Um, and I've made mine so it, it doesn't fill, but it comes about halfway across. So think about that when you're doing it. Um, and I'm gonna show you uh, how, how you might do it. We're gonna cut this out so you need scissors. Uh, I'll put that just there. Can you see all of this? Yeah, just about. So we're going to draw the owl and think, I'm just going to think about this part of the owl to start off with the, the body, okay? The body and, and that leg with the, with the claw. And it's a sort of a wedge shape, okay? So I'm going to start off the way that I, I'm just going to <coughs> so you can see everything I'm doing. Better. Um, there we go. A, just start off thinking now, I need to keep in mind how big my original one was. A really simple shape like that. And then with another wedge. So this is like a wedge shape to start off with. Then with another wedge going the, the other way. Okay. And then he's got a sort of that funny leggy cloy thing. And then you can make it a wee bit rounder, rounder at the front. And, round, and you, so you end up with that sort of shape. Uh, and you'll need to do a hard line round it for when you come to cut it out. Okay. And you can do that sort of wobbly line to show the, the feathers of the tail. So that's the first bit, the body. Um, and once you've done that, you don't need to worry about faces or any features within that. Just think of the shape. Um, and once you've done that, we're going to think about the, the wing, this, this wing here. Okay. Um, and you can see that it cuts across the back, you know, about, about a, a quarter of the distance along, maybe a third, yeah, a quarter of the distance along. So that's about, about there. And I'm going to just draw a 
kind of a wing shape, not too big, that sort of thing. And you might, you might do that, the feathers of the wing, that sort of thing as it comes around. Maybe do it bigger, that's, that's probably big enough for me, I think. So you do that one. And then the other wing does that sort of thing. All right. So you'll end up with the shape roughly like that. My first one's a bit, a bit more considered, but something like that. I've done. And once you've done that, um, I'll leave that there just now for people who need it. Uh, hang on. Once you've done that, you're going to cut it out. So you cut out the whole thing. Round the edge. There you go. I'll just move this. If anyone needs, just ask me to put it back. But you'll end up with something like that. I'm going to put the, the background to the side. Don't need that right now. Um, and what we're going to do is think about uh, making the next stage of, of the owl. Once the first part. So the owl, as I say, comes in, in three bits. You've got the body and you've got the, the, got the face. You've got the, this, the body and that wing. And you've got this wing at the back. And it's this wing at the back that we're, gonna, we're going to make. OK? Well, we're going to do first. Um, and what I'm actually going to do, so you'll end up with something like that by from using your template, but we're going to put the whole thing to the side and just think about these sort of the kind of marks that I've used. So the far the, the back wing is darker because the and I want to say it's a barn owl we're doing. The barn owl has a dark back and then the top side of the wing is darker. So we're thinking about that darkness and the underside is a wee bit lighter. But it also I've I've made these marks sort of like the sort of the if you like the 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 uh, shape of the feathers or the lines of the feathers and these, this dottiness also. And what I did was I did that first. So all I'm going to think about is making a mark like that. I'm going to use my um, graphite stick uh, pencil and just do that. Okay. Dark, a dark linear sort of random mark with, with energy like that. And then dots on sort of random dots on top of it to create the texture. So it's not, you're not thinking wing, you're not drawing the wing first and then making your lines match it. You're, you're drawing the lines. And then doing dots and making, them, making, it, making the marks quite dark and heavy, whatever it is you, you might use. I've got a magic marker here, you know. I might use that. But make it so that you can see the lines, so that so there's some space between the lines, um, so you get so you get a texture. A dark magic marker is running dry; it's not working very well. Um, so dark, dark linear marks, and with a dotty texture on top. Another magic marker. Hang on. Yeah, it's a bit better. <clears throat> that sort of thing. So just a patch of of, uh, of marks like that. Don't worry about how much it looks like a wing. And once you've done that, uh, what I want you to do is take your, your template that you've made and just sit it down on top. So you're thinking about this area here. Sit it down on top of those marks you've made and find a bit that you like. You, it's, uh, it's not... You know, it's very difficult to choose a piece that looks wing-like. I uh, don't want you to think too much about that. And then find something and draw round the template, okay, in the shape of just that wing, okay? So you end up with a line, something like that, okay? That's what, and once you've done that, um, cut it out, whichever one you use, All right?
He'll end up with something like that. So this ring's going to sit in behind. So the, the next bit we're going to do is, is this the body here. So the reason we've left these two these sort of tabs on it is because it's going to sit in behind. So, it does, so we don't need to worry about, about matching the edge at the moment. You can do that later on if you want. Okay. So that's what's going to happen. The next thing we're going to do is, is make this part. Now, so we're now going to make this, this piece here. Now, you see when I put it together, that the, the back wing is darker, okay? So the marks you make for this are going to be lighter. You're not going to lean so heavily and you might use something different. You might use a different uh, medium. That's up to you. I'm going to use the same medium, but I'm just not going to lean so heavily. And I'm going to make a mark similar to the mark I made with the, the background. But once again, that's up to you. Just make something that's slightly lighter. Um, as I said in the presentation, or said quite, quite a lot of presentations, reason that things think, think, sit separate is, you know, the overlapping shapes uh, transition from light to dark. So obviously if you have uh, something of different uh, values, they'll occupy a different space on your surface, okay? So we're gonna make a mark, but a random mark over this bit of paper, just, and I'm, I, I like to, I'm holding my uh, graphite stick long. So the marks I make are really, really kind of random, rather like the ones I did on the background, but bigger, okay? And I'm not leaning heavily at all. You can just about see them. But so something that's going to be bigger than the shape of your template. So you can set your template on it and, uh, and it will cover the whole thing. Or the sorry, template will be completely surrounded by marks. So it's something lighter and random. Okay. Again. So you, it's the mark you're thinking about. It's not what it's going to be. I want you to th just think about and enjoy the process of, of uh, making marks and and, and, and feel what it's like to do that. Okay, so that's mine, my sort of light one. And I, and I might work into that again later. So piece of paper, area of marks large enough to sit your whole thing. Actually, something I meant to do in my demonstration that I didn't get round to was, I, I mentioned on the, uh, when I was doing the presentation that Mark Harold had that chicken uh, drinking out of a, a puddle, which was created uh, using um, frottage, right? So frottage is when you, you take something and you, and, you, and you draw its texture. So I'm gonna do that. You, most of you can see that idea. I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate, you can watch, well, maybe watch. So I've, I've got this, this is actually a, a table mat from my house and it's got sort of, well, you can see that it's got a texture there. So it's a mechanical texture. I just catch the light with it. You can see that. So I'm going to put that down, put a bit of thin paper over the top of it. And I hope this works because nothing worse than demonstrating it doesn't work. Um, so it's quite a thin piece of cartridge paper or you can use anything like. And if I go over that. There you go. You're picking up the texture of what's underneath. And that's quite a nice way of, of making an area of marks, okay? And you might use that for this. If I was going to do that, I'd have to do it later. So okay, that won't work because I need to lean hard to make it work. So if I take a pencil, I've only got soft pencils. I need a, I need a hard pencil. So a, I'm going to get myself a hard pencil and demonstrate that. Hang on. I've only got hard pencils and soft pencils in this room. I can't find anything hard. So if I take a, a softer pencil, you get the same thing. 
you get the texture you're picking up and you can you can use that to cut out one of your shapes so got eyes we've got a nice piece of um wire mesh there we'll do the same thing uh, you can't see it so, so anyway find a surface if you, if you have anything handy you can do that a bit of frot eyes bit of surface drawing uh, to make out something so you've all got that pretty much some some random random marks a uh, large enough so what i want you to do is to place your owl on top of it and once again find find a bit of it and draw around it okay now draw around that wing also but you're not going to cut that wing out so draw around the whole thing <coughs> just wait till i've drawn mine before you cut i'll just demonstrate what you're going to do So there we go, I've drawn around the whole thing, but, but I don't want this wing, okay? So what I'm gonna to have to do is, is draw a line. So you get, you get the top of the, the, the owl's body here, continue that along like that. So you end up like, you continue the line of this wing down like that. So they meet up and you're going to cut out along those. So you're gonna cut out the whole shape, okay? But not, that wing okay so once you've done that pop it out So this is the most uh, complicated bit of cutting you're going to do. So it's all downhill after that. Mm -hmm. yep. So you'll end up with something like that. It's got the um, sort of random mark on it. So um, you've got that now. When I when I look at the, the piece that I made next to mine, okay. So mine's a wee bit darker, and I, I imagined uh, that the the underside of the wing might have a wee bit a wee bit more darkness. There's a, there's a kind of a it has the underside of a, a barn owl's wing also has marks on the wing. So you might make some wee some other wee dotty marks on it. Okay. You might add another wee bit of darkness to, to suggest that that contour of the wing how it kind of dips and comes back maybe the, a shadow a wee bit under the wing you might do a bit of that but once again try to keep it random and, and the tail a wee bit darker perhaps and 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 dotty also so but remember it's got to be mine's gone a wee bit darker because i've been rubbing it with my hands because i've been using it to demonstrate with so keep it keep it lighter than your background and lighter than your your back wing okay so you might work into it a wee bit uh, while, while while people are completing so the next thing we're going to do is the uh, is the face all right the owls or some barn owl owls faces 
uh, to simplify them, I have a kind of a sort of a heart shaped thing. I'll do it on this bit of paper. Um, they kind of do that, okay? Um, and the eyes are sort of almond shaped. And the, the eye itself is, the eyeball is obviously round, but because of the wee corner bits. And then there's a wee beak at the bottom that does that, and there's a, a line, okay? And those are dark. So I'm just doing, this isn't what you're going to draw. This is just to show you what it's like its face on. And then there's always a nice wee kind of texture bit around the edge. That'll be dark. So we want, we want to see that. We want to think about that from the side, which is what I've done there. So what I'm going to do is um, do something like this. But something that it fits on, when I, when I do it, it's going to be pretty much to fill your your template from top to bottom, okay? See how, it's, see how I've got it so that it's big enough to go from top. So think about that when you're doing it. What you might want to do is take your template, do that, and then make your face to fit into it. Okay, so I'll do... I don't know if it's bigger than that. Okay. And then like that, and then there's a line down the middle. And all I'm going to do is so. And then, then I've got my beak down there, and one eye because we're only seeing one eye. Do um, put it too too out to the side. And I'm just doing this with something dark. And then I've got a wee just look at the edge. And then I'm going to cut that out. Okay? So I'll leave that there for you to look at. So you take your template, draw, draw around your template. And make your face fit into it. Okay? And then chop that out. Another face. And you should end up with three pieces body in one wing, back wing, and face. Based on your template. So for those of you who, who do that, what I'm going to use is I'm going to make the moon next. And I'm using one of these plastic tubs that we use in the studio, uh, the base of that. So something that's about, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches, two inches across uh, that you can draw around to make your moon. If you want to go and have a look in the kitchen cupboard. So I'm going to put I'm going to that to the side. Um, if anyone, I'll, leave, I'll actually leave it there. It doesn't need to be here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the moon. The moon is made out of two bits of paper, okay? Um, I've got a scrap off the floor, so I'm not always using new bits. There we go. Um, so two, a, a circle and a, an almond sit, and that just sits on there like that, okay? And the way we do that, take your, whatever it is you're drawing around and draw around it twice. So, once, and twice, okay? But one of them, so, so you've got two circles like that. With one of them, what I want you to do is offset 
your, your glass, whatever it is you're drawing, and offset it to, to the side to create the crescent and draw around that bit again, okay? So you'll end up with, with that sort of shape. So two circles and then offset whatever it is you're drawing around and, and draw it again to create that crescent. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to draw that, so I'm going to um, make my, my marks on that before I cut it. I'm going to use a bit of charcoal, I quite like the softness. And it's also, it's, it's a different kind of mark. So this is going to be sitting on top of the sky, that random sort of scratchy sky, sky uh, texture you made. So you want, you want a mark that's going to be different from that, so it, so it looks different. I'm going to use the charcoal. I'm just going to rub it across it like that. I'm going to rub it with my finger to, to soften it up. So that's very different from the background that I made. And then what I'm going to do is chop those out. Okay. Remember, it should be a different mark from the mark you use for the for the sky. So there you end up with two bits, one that's a circle, one that's a sort of almond shape, and they'll create your moon and the crescent on the moon. And now to see that properly, I need to get a darker background. So, uh, what I'm going to do is put my background down again, my, my sky down again, and I'm going to put the three things on that we've made so far. All right? So there's my... And wing. my face, and my moon. Okay, so we should all be get, getting to, towards that sort of stage. So um, I'm going to start showing you that now. Okay, I'm going to move that up and move in my bottom bit of landscape that I, that I showed you earlier on, which is that. So there's a couple of things about this that, that uh, you might think about. I'll just put it all together. Hmm. Yeah. So in this, there's, I've used a couple of different uh, mediums to make this, and I'll show you how I made it in a second. Um, I've used charcoal at the top and then there's there's the graphite at the bottom. So I, what, what I wanted was it, the, the landscape darker further away and lighter uh, closer to me. Landscape's normally the other way around in the, in the daylight. Um, but the, that sort of, I, I wanted to create that kind of uh, sense of depth or distance change. Um, and I used charcoal and, and then my graphite stick. You can use whichever. I've got a couple of other uh, backgrounds. I'll put those, this all to the side so it's just the background we're talking about. Uh, and that, oh, there we go. there's that, there's a couple of other backgrounds, That's, this is just uh, the graphite stick, okay, and I, I made these using a template, and I'm going to show you the template we're, we're going to use, so it's quite nice, you've got all the texture of the, the random lines, but there's a mechanicalness to the edge, I'll show you how I got that, um, uh, and the different, when, when things overlap, you get different textures, so we're going to be looking at that, in this one I did it with charcoal and graphite, in that one, it's just graphite. Um, and this one, which I haven't cut out, which is also quite nice. That's just that's just charcoal, uh, layers of charcoal. I'll show you how I did that. Um, I got, uh, I'll move that to the edge. So it's just a piece of paper. You take a piece of paper and you just draw a random organic shape on it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. You lay it down and then,
Now, what I'm doing, you probably notice, I'm moving my hand along the piece of paper as I do this hand here to hold down the edges. If the edges flap about, uh, it can be more problematic. So I'm using that to do that. And then shift it. Sometimes I turn it around and do it again. Okay. And you start to get, see what overlaps, you get these nice things happening. You might, you know, rub it with your finger a wee bit, whatever. So the top I did with the charcoal, like that, and the bottom I did with the graphite stick, uh, like that, on, on the one that I did, the one that I've shown you um, as part of mine at the start. Okay. The other one I showed you, um, the second one I showed you, is all pencil, all graphite stick. Um, and it's up to you what you do. You, you, you might do that. You might, uh, you know, use, uh, I don't know what, a uh, bit of sponge and paint to do it. You can do that also. If you want. So that, you end up with this sort of thing and it creates that idea. So what you do is you take a bit of paper, um, I'll use this bit of paper, uh, create some sort of random waviness on it. Um, now, I've got, a, I've got a, a craft knife, so I'm going to cut it out with a craft knife because it's quicker, but you might want to take a pair of scissors. Um, and you don't need to worry about how faithful you are to the edge you've created. It's, it's just kind of a guide for you if you like. Um, if you've got scissors, that's just fine. You know, use the scissors. You'll end up. Cutting out. Set my craft knife's not sharp enough. Without cutting my fingers. There we go. You'll end up with some sort of shape like that. You then, which is what that is, this one's a wee bit better. You set it down. And now, I actually started at mine with a bit of paper that's the same size. Okay, so you started with this, this bit of paper. So you do it on a separate piece of paper, you don't do it on the background. You just said that you don't do it on your sky. You do it on a separate piece of paper, okay? Um, put that on top. So this is the same size as the piece of paper for my sky. This will take you a wee while. If you're using charcoal like me here, you might want to use some fixative um, if you have it. And if you don't have fixative, hairspray will do the same job um, to fix it down to stop it from pulling all over the place. And when you when you do that, you might want to rub it with your fingers to start off with. Move the template, and you can if you turn the template round the other way. Obviously, that makes uh, an asymmetry, uh, from, and the overlapping bits will go dark out. What's quite nice about this is the, the randomness of the, the mark you're making, but the hard edge uh, at the edge of the, of the template. Another thing you might think about doing when you, is the angle of your mark. If your marks all go, the, if you make all your marks go one way, you know, I'm making them go that, that way with, with this pass. So your marks all go one way with one pass, then you, you change it, you move it around, and you make the marks go at, at a different angle. Another pass. That also adds a, a bit of difference to it, a bit of bit of texture. You start to build up something like that. 
quite nice. And then um, make it higher at the top and cut into it. Charcoal at the top makes it darker, and then at the bottom, I'm going to use my uh, my graphite stick again, just to create a difference. Remembering to turn your your template round to to create that asymmetry, so it's not all always the same hills looking the same way. And move it along, you know, move it from side to side a bit as well. You get the idea. Everyone okay with that? And if you, once you get to that stage, then take your scissors and obviously chop along the, the ridge of the horizon. And that will be your, your uh, landscape in the, in, in the background. Chop that out once you're done. end up with your night sky and your landscape looking quite different. Another order down here. So the last thing, last two things we're going to do um, is make a couple of trees uh, to go on the landscape um, and a cloud to go in the sky, um, like that. Okay, now the trees are, now I think this one should be darker because it's at the bottom. So to create a contrast with this sort of graphite-y, landscape-y bit, um, I would actually make the tree darker uh, so all I would do is get a bit of scrap paper that I haven't used yet um, and find something that's that's quite dark, either the, either the charcoal and make, you know, really dark charcoal mark or, um, you know, a sharpie if it's not running out like my one here. Um, so do something it's a random shape. Once again, don't, don't draw the tree first. Just do a random shape. Oops. What I've done with this, if I do it around that way, you can see the shape it is. It's just some sort of organic. So I, I took my pencil and just made an edge, which you can't see. I'll, I'll hold it up to you. So if I do that to the camera, you can see if I tilt it. So you can see I've just drawn a kind of organic tree-like shape. So 
Okay. And then I'm going to cut that. Out. So my trees have got, um, because mine's a solid tree, solid tree shape, I'm going to go. Uh, solid tree shape, it's like a tree in, in, with, with leaves on it, the time doing. So if you look at this one, which is Mark, Mark Charles' one, his trees have no leaves, they're like winter trees. So that's a lot more cutting out. It's just branches, a lot of little branches. It's a lot more work, but it creates a different shape. You might be interested in doing that. Um, that sort of idea. But I'm doing a tree with leaves on it uh, because it's quicker. <laughs> so rather than moving my, my scissors when I'm cutting, I'm moving my bit of paper. There we go, there's one, one tree. Um, yeah, it sort of sits better on the, on the thing. You can see it more because of the difference. Um, when I made this one, what I did was um, I actually uh, drew... What I'm doing, you can't. I drew a, a kind of tree-like organic shape. And then I chopped that out and I used that as a template. Um, let me move this. Put a new blade in my, in my scalpel, so cut quick it. I created a template. So make, make two trees. Uh, the, the one at the back should be lighter uh, to sit against the dark um, landscape. So the front tree is dark, the back tree is lighter. And that, that way the, they'll stand out. Uh, front tree is large, far away tree is small. Father Ted thing. So there, for, the, for this tree, that's what I did. I, I created a, a template. I got another bit of paper off the floor. Put that on there. And then did a similar thing that I did with the, oops. Uh, it's a bit too small, but you get the idea. And then, and then cut that out, which is how I did that. Okay. But I think the darker charcoal tree works better. And you with it. Yeah. So here you have. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to do the cloud to finish it off. Moon. And the cloud is just um, as I did before. Hang on. For me, I want the cloud to be softer and once again a different texture to the to the sky. So all I did was something that's to mark charcoal or pastel or, or, or whatever, just something that's a different texture from the sky. Um, 
can be lighter or darker. Um, and then I do a sort of cloud-like shape on it. Cut that out. <clears throat> end up with something like that with fingerprints on it so you need to rub them off fix it with your fix tip and you end up with another cloud two clouds so a couple of trees a cloud and if for those who get that done quickly there's one more wee thing you can do while the others are catching up All higher up. We could start with just one cloud. Okay, and for those who um, get that far, who finish, uh, just while everyone's kind, I made um, a wee mouse. So your owl can be hunting a mouse. Yeah, so I think the dark trees work better at the front. Yeah. Right. See, see how you go. Are we gluing down yet? No. Say again? Are we gluing it in yet? You, you, when you're ready, stick it down. So stick, it. It down, stick it down in sequence. So obviously the, the stuff at the back first. So the first thing you'd stick down would be the, the landscape, landscape on top of the sky, okay? okay? And then you would put the moon or or decide where you're, you can move the things around. That, this is, that's the, um, the orientation I've, I've put them together. In. But I was playing with it the other day, and, or I was moving around and the moon got down behind the hill like that, that was quite nice. So you might, you know, you might go, whoops, make a mess of it, hang on. You know, and then you can put a tree in front of that. That's all quite nice. Or you might take a silhouette of a tree, or likely to be a silhouette, in front of that. That's quite nice. So play with play with um, how the thing fits together. But background first. So you got your sky. Put your landscape on top of that. If you're going to put the moon behind it, like I just did, then maybe do that before you stick the landscape down. Then, then probably your cloud. Work out where your cloud's going to be, and then. Um, you might want to stick your, your wing to your owl and your face on your owl and stick all of them down at one time. And then some trees and the mouse, if you've done them. I've loved that, you, and it's been really good. Enjoy that, great. Yeah, great fun. Okay. Good. Well, I mean, we're not, we'll not finish up. We'll just keep, keep going, take as long as you want, folks. I'll just talk a wee bit while you're all doing that. Thanks, so, you. so to remind you of some of the, the ideas that, that made me uh, think of this. So, first of all, the guy that it was based on, the artist I was looking at that, that made me think of doing this, a guy called Mark, I'm not sure how you pronounce his second name, Mark Harald, H-E-A-R-L-D, or Harald or Harald, something. So have a look at him again, if you like, enjoy doing this thing. Oh, there's Gillian coming back in. Um, so uh, Mark Harald, um, he uses paint, he uses different papers, he, as I demonstrated at the start there, he'll spray and, and, and splatter paint around and then and then cut things out of that as well as drawing pastel, that sort of thing. So Mark Hart, um, it was very much, you know, I, I want you to have something that you that you like, a picture that has that you enjoy, that you enjoyed making, that you enjoyed looking at. Um, but it, for me, the exercise was, the thing I was trying to emphasize was, was to, to think about making one, to think about uh, the, the lightness and darkness of the marks, about how those marks sit against each other. You know, how my one there that's on the screen, you've got your very scratchy, uh, viral, uh, intense viral mark at the background, that random uh, scratchy mark against the softness of the, of the, of the cloud. Uh, so it's a different mark, it's a different, well, it's a different color of black actually as well, that's the thing. Um, and of, of course the edge of the, of the cut bit of paper um, is what separates things as well. 
but it's it's marks, it's lightness and darkness of marks and edges uh, that are making that work. The um, I think the the idea with the template for the for the landscape works quite well. So using templates is a thing you might might think about if you want to do more of this in your own time, which is you know it, it's a, a nice nice idea to to try to grow and, and looking at his work, looking at Mark Harl's work will help you to um, see how it, how it may be used. And I'm looking, I'm just Googling for, for things like um, collage and, and artists using templates. I guess the most famous artist who uses a template um, at the moment is Banksy. He uses it to, uh, to, to, to spray through with, with uh, spray paint. But that, the way we did the, um, the landscape there, that's exactly what Banksy does using a template. You might want to have a little think about doing something like that, more of that in your own time. Um, I'll put this together, uh, put it up on YouTube, um, and you can access it and, and, and flip through it again to remind yourself. Uh, just again, Mark Harald is the guy with that, H-E-R-L-D. Um, have a look at his stuff if you want some inspiration. And just think about that idea of mark making uh, as, a, as, a, as a, a skill in itself and perhaps uh, work on developing that. Uh, in your own work and I will um, see you later you can join again on Friday if you like absolutely fine but if not I'll see you again next week